Hey boys and girls, it's Night Stalker here. Welcome along today to my updated guide for Longsword. Check it, check it out. We're going to do it a little bit differently this time to what I have done for previous seasons. I think those videos were just far too long with far too much detail. That was a little bit unnecessary. But um, I do have previous guides if you want to go back and view them from previous seasons and the previous advice that were applicable to that time in the meta and that time in the game update. You're welcome to go back and have a look. There's some quite detailed stuff there. But for today, we're just going to focus on the main thing that people keep asking me about. That's going to be um, the stats, that's going to be the runes, uh, we're going to briefly touch on all the abilities for a longsword, and I'm not going to do any gameplay ones for this particular guide, because I have over a hundred videos of longsword gameplay that you can just, just click on my name, click on my channel, and you can find as many videos about longsword gameplay as you could possibly ever want. So uh, from there, thanks for coming along, let's go on now, we'll get straight away into what sort of stats I like to use for this king of beautiful weapons. Right, let's talk about some stats. So um, here on the Frontier server where I'm recording this, at the moment we don't have, as you can see, none of our um, bonuses are available to us. See how the at items attributes sealed and will be removed on the 9th of August. So that's, well, at least we're well, getting on to two weeks away. So I can't wait for this to come out, so we're just going to push on. Um, none of the armors and stuff get it as well. So these, all you're seeing here, are just the base stats without any boosts, but it does include the runes. Okay, so there are these days there are kind of two main uh, longsword builds you can do, and both are viable. Uh, you can do the tanking build, which is my personal favourite, um, or you can do the attack damage build. So, as you can see here, um, I've done all my runes and everything to uh, basically boost all of my stats more than anything else. So. Um, when we've got all of this armor here, uh, in the the new uh, meta of the game, the newer version of the game, it's actually more uh, beneficial to use armor than it is to use toughness, and that's quite a bit different to previous guides that I have released. And um, the stats have been done, been deep dived by a uh, co-creator of mine, uh, Alan, and. It really seems now that this is the way to go if you are going to make a tank build. Dump everything you can into armor. You will of course, uh, with your um, armor and stuff like that, you will get additional hit points, same with your runes, and of course any incidental toughness you gain will also gain you a bit more hit points there as well. So as you can see I've gained about, without any of the stats stacking, I've gained about 2000 hit points. Um, I think that's all we have to say about this one because of the way that the um, damage application works, the higher you can get your armor, um, the better. Now, if you've got other characters playing other weapons, it's not necessarily the case. You're only better to stack armor if you have more than 800 base armor ab abilities, right? So if I was to strip all everything off there and it came to 800 uh, base, just with a base set, then you're primed to get more armor rather than toughness. If you ha are not able to achieve a base level of 800 armor, you are better to take toughness. Now, if you're a heavy armor user like a longsword, a maul, anything like that, you should absolutely be putting all of your stats into armor if you are tanking. Now, the other main one um, that we can do is we can put everything into damage. So. Um, basically, the majority of your damage comes from slashing, if you're going to use skills like um, with Valor or Paladin. Um, if you're going to use Shield Bash and Clash of Shields, you can also think about boosting your, your uh, blunt damage. Particularly if you, like here for example, we've got an extra, um, we haven't got any extra blunt damage on, on here, so we might want to consider edging that blunt damage up, simply because uh, when you use Clash of Shields on an Archer or a Light unit, you want to kill them all just Dug, 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 all in a row. So you need to up about 150 or 200 damage to achieve that. And the way to do that is here. So here, each point of strength increases your hero's piercing, armor penetration, slashing damage, and blunt damage by six points. So given that slashing and blunt are our primary ones that we want to use, um, when you're blocking and overhand stabbing, you actually are using piercing, and there's one, uh, one hit in the basic attack combo, just left clicking, click, 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 that does uh, piercing damage as well. Um, so in this vein, we're going to increase our our strength up by as much as possible. And we're going to put a little bit into agility because it is going to give us that uh, armor penetration. 
all right? So it is quite valuable. Now, when you do this, here's what you're gonna end up with. This is the sort of build that you'll end up with. Now, you'll change your runes too, to um, get more damage, basically. Any of these sort of things that will give you more damage will be the way to go. So instead of taking toughness and resilience, you'll change all your runes We'll talk about runes in a minute. We'll change all your runes through uh, into damage-based ones. Um, you'll see the effect that it has here. We've dropped way down, way down, <laughs> and that's just part and parcel of it. But if you're going to use skills like uh, martial prowess, where you get, you know, you hit five units, you'll get 15% of your hit points back with it, uh, on top of your mercy of heaven. And you, you know, you don't often use your bandage as a longsword, but if you do this build, you'll certainly be using your bandage much more like your your ordinary heavy armor hero. Um, and you also might want to, uh, well, you may want to give the Sally Forth Alt a go if you're taking this sort of build as well. I'm not a fan of the Sally Forth Alt, but uh, if you're fighting, like, say, an unshielded unit and you're in the middle of them, the Sally Forth Alt will go quite well for you. You're going to lose all of that wonderful uh, uh, flexibility that the uh, Clash of Shields Alt gives you, but if you're looking for raw damage, well, maybe you can look at that too. Anyway. Those are the two types of builds. There's the, the, the tank and the spank tank. <laughs> let's move on to our next segment. Alrighty, let's talk about runes. These are the Season 8 runes. So if you're viewing this in a later season, you may wish to uh, take restock of it. I generally update this guide once a, once a season. So, um, this is my main build because I am a tanking build, longsword. And so this is what I use. Um, I, uh, this is kind of like a mandatory one for all all uh, long swords, you know, whether you're the spank tank version or the uh, tank version. And the reason for that is every time you heal yourself and your allies while you're glowing green, um, for eight seconds you get a six percent damage reduction, and that is fantastic. Uh, I can't express to you how good that is if you're a new player. And of course, the rune is called Goat. Huh? Huh? Somebody knows what they're talking about. And given the other options available to me here on the longsword, um, recover health well below 25% health, well, as we've probably already covered, I'm not sure which order I'm releasing the segment in, but uh, if you hit that Mercy of Heaven button, you'll immediately get 30% of your health back. So I don't find this particularly good. Um, and all damage is increased by 100 points while above 70% health. This is one here that you could, if you're the spank tank version, you could con certainly could consider replacing this with this one. Okay, but it is going to give you a nice big hit to you and your units. There are options there available to you. And of course, you've got five slots on your longsword, so I've got two more left. I can either have this, which I don't find particularly useful, or I'm just going to get an extra couple of um, stat points, really. Uh, resilience is armor. I don't know why the localization is weird like that. Looking now down at our helmet. So, again, this is my build for my tank version. Um, Recover 2% of health every second while you're on a supply point, don't do that. Health increased by 3%, that could be useful. Um, I find that the toughness stat, um, because you get, where are we here? There we go. Um, each point of toughness increases your hero's maximum health by 100. So, I think I've done the maths right on that. 700 hit points is going to be more than 3%, so that's why I've gone that way. Um, bandages healing, you don't really use bandages a longsword, um, especially uh, even if you're a spank tank, because you use your bandage, you get up to three quarters health, and then you uh, use your mercy of heaven to top your health off. So you really do not need to use this rune as a longsword. Um, again, you do not need to boost your bandage with a longsword. So the other options you've got here in the singles are crit rate increased by 30, that might be useful if you want to put out more damage, but you can also take, of course, more base damage as well. More base damage and more base tankiness, which is what I've done here. I really like these new one, one star runes. Um, flicking now to the armor. Resilience increased by seven, so of course we want more armor as a, um, as a tanking version of the longsword. And also damage is taken is reduced by 3%. So when you take your 6% reduction from your rune on your weapon, you've got another 3%, you're up to 9%. And if you take something like the frost steels and things like that, you're going to have another 8%. So uh, those stack really, really well for a 17% damage reduction. <laughs> As you can imagine, that is quite significant. Um, if you're a spank tank, this is the one for you though. All damage is increased by 100 points. Oh no, wait, we've already covered we've already covered the weapon. I am an idiot. Here we go. 
Critical defense increased by 220. You don't generally need that. Um, the reason is you're already quite tough. You've got heavy armor. You've got a lot of hit points. You have a shield, right? So uh, all this is really good for is uh, against dual blades or repetitive ranged hero headshots, things like that. But you've got a shield, man. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. And dual blades really don't do much when you've got a stack of uh, damage reduction either. Um, you don't need immunity of poison and bleed because you have the mercy of heaven skill which will keep you alive even though you can't bandage. You don't need to worry about that one at all. Um, this is my one damage reduced by uh, 3%. While you're in a flag area damage taken is reduced by 10%. Um, I was tempted by this one. Uh, you spend a lot of time sort of defending points with a longsword but at the end of the day, I chose not to take it because it's not active all the time. It's only active for 5 or 10% of the game at absolute most. So I, I thought in my own brain well, that it's much better to take runes that are going to be active all the time. So the other one I took is the armor increased by 7. So again, that's a 42 armor increase across the board. Uh, and, and of course you've got these individual ones here. Maximum health is increased by 500 and all defenses by 10. Also a very nice one. This one here will of course give you a lot more um, armor in total, but this one will top up your hit points as well. And if you're a spank tank you might wish to consider this one because it's quite useful in that sort of manner. Uh, let's have a look at our boots. So these are the ones I've chosen. Armor penetration, agility up, up by 7, strength and toughness by 7. Because I'm a, a tank build, I'm just trying to give myself a little bit more extra damage capability there. Some of the other options you've got is, again, only while you're in a flag area. I don't like that one. Movement speed is, speed is increased by 4%. Well, all that does is make you even more faster than your troops in my experience. And as a frontline um, line breaker hero, uh, movement speed is not huge you know people don't generally chase you down unless you're on no life but of course you, you've got your mercy of heaven to heal yourself up again a full damage is reduced by 30 percent yeah yeah if you're getting chucked off the wall a lot by malls you could consider that one but i don't see that as being particularly useful um bandage can be used while moving well you have the mercy of heaven skill that you can do while you're moving so don't get that one so that leaves us with the one, one skills. Agility by seven, and that will increase uh, your armor penetration and damage. Um, all armor penetration increased by 40. This is great, absolutely fantastic for, for one slot. I highly recommend this for both build types. Strength and toughness, great, particularly if you're a tank build, lovely. And agility and, re and uh, resilience, so that is armor. So in this instance, I actually might swap that out the more I think about it. And of course, our last one is our gloves. So when you kill five enemy soldiers, you get increased damage dealt by 10%. This is really good if you're a spank tank because you've got those big wide arcs for most of your uh, skills that kill soldiers, especially light soldiers, really, really well. So that's uh, a good option for the, um, the spank tank build, the aggression build. Damage dealt is increased by 3%. This is also really good. Um, upon death, nearby allies gain 10% for 10 seconds. Well, hey take your pick. You can either have here 10% damage every time you kill 5 soldiers, so when you're in big battles, or you can have 3% all the time. It's your call how you want to stack that. Um, I wouldn't do this um, for longsword, even with the spank tank. When you kill one enemy hero, you increase your damage by 10%. It is still really hard to kill heroes with a longsword. You don't have any lockdowns, you don't have any uh, big, big damage skills. It's not the sort of thing that a longsword does. They're not assassins. I wouldn't take this one at all. Um, this one's only while well, you're in a flag area. Again, 5% of the game, it, it, you're going to be on a flag area. I wouldn't worry about it. So it takes you down now to just the one star skills. So uh, the agility and resilience, uh, agility and armor. Don't forget that's a localization error, that's armor. Strength and toughness, um, all defenses increased by 30 and strength increased by 7. Well, what I did is I went strength increased by 7 because it's going to increase my blunt damage so that when I use my Clash of Shields ult, um, I'm getting that little bit more damage to be able to kill archers particularly because it's really nice to knock down a whole unit of archers in one sweep. Um, because I am a uh, longsword hero, with that is going for the tanking build, all defenses increased by 30 is where I'm at. So that's all that I'm about here. 
and that one's an extra bit of armor and an extra bit of armor penetration for my slashy slash. So again, however you want to sort of tweak your, your particular hero here is perfectly fine. And that is all I have to say on the Season 8 runes. That's pretty much the rundown that you can use as a longsword. Let's move on to another segment. Okay, so let's talk about the skills available to the Longsword class. Um, the very first skill is called With Valor. Now this is the skill that almost all Longsword builds will use. I, I certainly have never used the Longsword without this one, unless I was trying something a bit fancy. It's kind of like a, almost a mandatory skill really. So um, you give a couple of quick slashes with your, your sword, um, uh, then you do end up doing like a, a backhand with a shield, and then you finish with a kick that does knock down both units and heroes. It's actually very hard to land that last kick, um, unless of course the hero is just getting up from the ground already. And if you catch them in the middle of that standing up animation, you just put them back down. And so that can be very handy to use to secure kills. Um, I would recommend this for all, all longsword players, no matter what build you're taking. It's the basic damage and attack skill of this class. So, moving right along, we've got Paladin. Um, Paladin is a, a really good skill if you want to inflict damage in a wide area. It has a nearly a 180 degree arc of attack, and it does really quite decent damage in terms of what the longsword is capable of. Um, it does slashing damage, which is your main damage type as a longsword, uh, although, as we've already mentioned, longswords use all three kinds. Um, the, best, the best thing that you're going to get out of this particular skill is that it reduces the enemy's defense by 15% for 6 seconds. Now, 6 seconds is quite a while in, uh, in a combat, and particularly if you can land this on a, well, short sword or, you know, Imperial Spear Guard, anything with a very high armor value, you're going to give them a, quite a nerf for a reasonable period of time. Um, it does have a cooldown of 10 seconds, so your 6 seconds you will have a, a period of time where uh, that's not going to apply to them. Next one in the skill tree is the Mercy of Heaven skill. Um, this will restore 2% of your health every second for 10 seconds, so that will give you 20% health back, but it will also immediately, as soon as you well cast it because it's kind of magic, it will restore 10% of your, your maximum health as well. And so that will give you one third of your hit points back every 20 seconds without having to stop and bandage. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, the other bonus effect when you get it up to level 3 is that everything within the radius of its burst uh, will get healed, basically, all of your allies, whether that be uh, heroes or units. They will all get healed nicely, and that will give them 10% of their health points back over 10 seconds, or one, one health per tick, which is slightly different to how it heals you personally. Uh, this is a mandatory skill for all longsword classes. If you're not using this skill, why, why are you playing longsword, right? The skill is, is the purpose of longsword, and it's really the crux of the matter. It helps you support your team, and it helps you support your unit hugely. It also keeps you alive constantly when you're tanking. If you're going to play longsword, you really, really should have this particular skill. One kind of little combo that works with it, uh, well we're making this in Season 8, so there is a rune um, that you can put on your longsword and shield that while, they are be while you and your allies are being healed, i.e. when you're glowing green here, uh, you will also get 6% damage reduction, which is mwah, mm, beautiful, and you absolutely want to be put using that rune. It's the best available rune for the longsword class in Season 8, according to me. <laughs> Um, next skill, Shield Bash. Um, shield Bash is a primary skill for the Longsword. Um, longsword doesn't have any wasted or unused skills, I should say. So all of the skills are useful, except probably Sally Forth, but we'll get to that. So one of the main things about Shield Bash is it does lots and lots of blunt damage. Um, it smashes through blocks, both heroes blocks and units blocks. Uh, and it's second strike, like you do one hit and then you do the loop to loop and another hit and it will throw soldiers back. Won't, won't knock them down but it will push them back. Um, and the best thing about it that makes it one of the, the primary and core skills is that it will actually remove the dazed effect on you. So um, if you're getting smacked around by, uh, by an enemy hero, trigger this and you'll go through their dazed effect and give them a little slap and push them back. Next skill on the roster is Martial Prowess. Basically, it's a two quick slashes, and it's a reasonable um, arc of damage. It's about 100 degrees to your front, um, and it does okay damage. Um, the most important thing about this skill uh, that wasn't present in previous builds is that every unit that you hit, 
So like if you hit five units in front of you or two heroes, each person that you hit, you'll get 3% of your health back. This is capped. There is a maximum number and try as I might, I haven't been able to figure out what that maximum cap is, but it's somewhere around the three to five sort of mark. Um, probably closer to five on reflection of that. But anyway, the point is, is that if you hit five people in front of you, you're going to get 15% of your health back, right? And then if you're playing as a longsword, you probably have a fair bit of health already. Hmm? Good skill. Uh, the other thing about it is, of course, is that you put your shield up while you're attacking. Uh, the last basic skill available to the longsword class is Knightly Vows. Uh, and Nightly Vows uh, allows you to increase your speed by 25% for 9 seconds, and that is huge, just huge. It's a long duration, and it's a uh, very high increase. Uh, the best part about this is once you get up to tier 3, a level 3 skill, um, you increase the speed of nearby allies, so both heroes and uh, units, by 25%. Now this has a couple of effects. The first one is that anyone using charging skills both heroes, that's you, with your Clash of uh, Shields alt, or uh, Paladins charging in as apps, any unit that has a charge skill, cavalry included, will uh, have their damage increased on their impact from the charge. This skill can be used very effectively in that manner. One of the other things it can do is it can send uh, javelins and things back to supply points much quicker to rearm. And the last one I ask you to consider is in deathmatch. If you jump into the middle of your team and you pop this, your team can absolutely swarm the enemy. Very, very useful in that sort of capacity. Now we'll move on to the two alts. Um, the first of the two alts is, we'll talk about um, Sally Forth first. I am no fan of the Sally Forth skill. It's interruptible. Um, it does only moderate damage in my opinion and it does remove the dazed effect and can knock heroes down but I'm not convinced by this skill. I find that I would probably rather take another one of the basic skills than use the Sally Forth ult. I'm not even joking. And I know I know there's a lot of people out there who say, oh yes, Sally Forth can work. It's, you know, you can do this and this with it and uh, it does lots of damage. Well. I disagree with those people. I find the Sally Forth skill to be inferior. And that's not because Sally Forth is bad in itself as a skill, but because the other ult is just amazing. So the other ult is a Clash of Shields. So basically you pop your shield up, you charge forward, knock over anything you touch and do a whole bunch of blunt damage. Um, the best thing about it as well is once they knock down, they're slowed by, by 75%, 75 percent for three seconds. So it makes them very, very slow to get back up again and a little bit slow to get back into formation if they're units. Um, this, this ult can be used to stop cavalry charges, it can be used to knock down entire shield walls, it can be used to as an escape, so you're starting to get beat up, turn around, use your ult away from the enemy and you'll get away quite happily. Um, it will instantly kill archers if you are built for, for doing so. Um, one, one hit touch on archers will kill them, anything up to imperials. That's assuming you've got a lot of blunt damage in your weapons. Um, it uh, you know, knocks down multiple heroes. It dismounts heroes, and that's something I use it for a lot, knocking heroes off their horses. Uh, th this skill is, in my opinion, the second best ultimate in the entire game. And that's you know, the best one is obviously the mall grab, because you walk up to somebody, you click one button, and you kill them. It's just appalling. But this is the second best ult in the game, according to me. <laughs> Um, because it has just had massive, massive utility, and you can do absolutely so much with it, especially on a nice 50 second cooldown once you get up to tier 3. So when you compare this to the Sally Forth ult, which is not bad, you know, as an attack, it's not a bad attack, but this particular skill, Clash of Shields, is just an amazing skill, and I can see no reason whatsoever to take Sally Forth over Clash of Shields. Simple as that. That's my summary of the skills, let's go back on to our next segment. Well boys and girls, that's it for today. A very much shorter uh, guide than usual. They used to be about 40 minutes or even up to an hour. So I hope you can appre appreciate a bit of the brevity. One last thing, if you're on the My Games server and you're using the My Games Marketplace, see here on the screen now, that is my code if you'd like to purchase any of the content creators packs. There's uh, these particularly lovely attires down here, as well as packs that will give you things like uh, silver, bronze, crafting material, all that sort of thing. I'll put a link to that in the description below in the video. 
Thanks for coming along, and if you do want to see plenty of gameplay using the longsword, how the longsword is used at expert level, just, as I say, come and have a look at all my videos. I've got over 100 videos of longsword gameplay. Hope you learned something new, or you just enjoyed the video. Thanks for coming to my channel.